So I want to talk about uh, Pygmy Drosura Gemi, or Gemi, or however you pronounce it. I'm just going to say Gemi um, collection, and uh, how I how I collect these Gemi with minimal effort because uh, it can be quite difficult. So just as an intro for those who don't know, like uh, for certain Drosura species, um, you know Drosura are the sundews. Um, they're the ones with the sticky leaves that catch insects and eat insects. Um, for a certain subgroup of Drosura, there's the Pygmy Drosura, which true to their name, they're very, very small. They kind of look like this. Uh, they're really pretty, a uh, little like, you know, jewels, I guess is, is how to describe it. And they stay real small. So, you know, if, if you want a tiny little plant, these are, you know, the go-to. Um, and they make something called uh, Geme, which let me show you this close up of a pot that I've already moved here. So the gemme are, let me get the tweezers to point at them. The gemme are the, like for example, this one on the top here, this crown here, you can see it has this glob of little little seeds, seed-like things on it. So gemme are not seeds. Um, they are more like some sort of uh, organelle that are like leaves or something, but they act like seeds. Um, and their purpose is to just, you know, propagate the plant. Uh, they, all of these gamay are just clones of the mother plant, so uh, each one will develop into the exact same copy of this plant. Um, and they kind of act like seeds. They don't last as long as seeds, um, and they're, you could treat them as like succulent leaves, kind of. Um, so in the wild, uh, like if there's rain or some animal brushing by, yeah, it will like touch this glob and it, it will like kind of pop. Um, and all the gemi will fly everywhere nearby and then spread the plant around. Uh, of course, in cultivation, without rain or without any disturbances, they kind of just slowly build up, as a, uh, and it actually might kill off the mother plant if you don't take care of the gemi, uh, mainly because you know nothing is going to remove the gemi from this mother plant, and then it can't grow any more new leaves. It's just going to clog it up. So you kind of want to uh, remove them. The problem is, you know, because they kind of pop everywhere and because they're so tiny it's really hard to go in and pick them all out plus you can't really use tweezers because they're still kind of like leaves um succulent leaves i guess they're not they're not soft but they're not really like seed like hard like you know seeds so you might damage them with tweezers and it, it, they're just so small so you're not going to be able to get many with tweezers anyways um so yeah they're kind of hard to gather up uh, by hand so one easy way to do it is to use a suction device. Uh, I think in the past people would like have a container, maybe like a film canister, and you'll poke two holes in it and just put two straws and you just suck from one straw and then use the other straw uh, to vacuum up the, the gemme around the, uh, the crown here. Uh, of course, you're going to have a little piece of like cheesecloth or something inside the container too so that you don't accidentally suck up the gemme into your mouth. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, I, I use this vacuum method so what I have is an actual, like, you know, uh, vacuum. This is some um, random shop vac, I guess, Armor Craft, Armor All, Armor All shop vac. And I 3D printed this little uh, lid uh, to help me with it. So this lid clips onto a mason jar, right? And it has one hole here where I've inserted this tube. Uh, and the, the tube goes into the mason jar. At the end of the tube, I'll put this little baggie. Uh, so, so that the gamete doesn't get sucked up into the vacuum, and then uh, other, at the other end, there's this larger tube which um, which connects to the actual vacuum, just as a, a press fits, right? So just shove it in there, and, and then yeah, it just forms a little vacuum system. Um, at the end of this tube, uh, you don't really need this, but I also 3D printed this little tip so that uh, I could pick at the gamete. Um, usually, I, I uh, in one hand I'll have some a pair of tweezers, and in the other hand I'll hold this thing to uh, vacuum it up. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, other equipment that you need is uh, maybe some tweezers. Uh, so you need tweezers in one hand and vacuum in the other hand. Uh, of course, you're going to need some like labeling tools. So I have my labels, my pen, Sharpie pen, uh, pipette filled with water so that I could fill these little like test tubes with a bit of water. And then um, just put the gemi in there. Uh, so let me try to get the focus right. Yeah, so you can see the gemi are in there with, uh, uh, filled with distilled water. And then you could put this in the refrigerator, um, and not the freezer, the refrigerator, and then they could store for uh, maybe a couple months. I don't know if they could actually reach a couple months, but definitely a few weeks is fine. Uh, and then you could sow them on some soil or something if you want. Um, so yeah, they're not really seeds. They don't last forever, but they also they also aren't like leaves <laughs> in that they will just die in a couple days. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, basically it. Uh, I'm going to set my camera so you could see me vacuuming up these gamay just as a demonstration. And you can see already in some of these crowns, I've already sucked them all up using my vacuum. So there's no more left in some of these crowns, only a few left. 
uh, but I will vacuum up, I guess, this big one here and some down here. So admittedly, it's a bit hard to do with the camera in the way. Um, I'll try to, my best, but you know, through the camera screen, I don't have any depth perception, right? <laughs> uh, whereas if you don't look through a camera screen, you have both your eyes and you can easily see the depth. But yeah, here is a tip and uh, I'll probably mute this video and just do a voiceover if I need to do any voiceovers um, because the vacuum is pretty loud. So let me turn on the vacuum and let's go. Uh, I'm gonna just voice over this part because yeah, the vacuum is really loud. Uh, so it, it looks a bit clumsy uh, from this video because I have a phone in my way. I'm, I'm trying not to knock the camera over off of the stand. Uh, normally when I do it, it it's really easy because I just shoved this tip uh, you can see one gimme just popped off there. They they kind of explode. Uh, normally, I just shove the tip really, really close to the crown, so the group of little gimme, and then I just like brush the, the tweezers around a bit, and it takes about 15 seconds per um, crown. So right now, I'm really struggling because I really can't see what's going on. It's hard to uh, do with the camera in the way and everything. Uh, but yeah, normally, it just takes 15 seconds. I could do a whole pot in less than five minutes, and uh, and I, I would get basically no loss. Like none of them will be popping out and flying everywhere because I'll have the nozzle. Oh, there goes another one. Uh, I'll have a no the nozzle so close to the crown that none can escape. But yeah, right now I'm, I'm struggling a bit because uh, I can't really see what's going on uh, through the camera. Uh, and a few of them are getting stuck on the leaves now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it, 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 it works um, way better without the camera in the way, <laughs> is, is I guess what I could say. You can see uh, some of them get stuck and gooey. I'm trying to free that one. Uh, it's kind of like a bit of a circus here because I really can't. There's no depth perception, right? When I look through the, the viewfinder of the camera, the screen. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know where my tweezers and my nozzle is pointing. But yeah, normally um, it's way easier. Uh, and then I'm just gonna knock off the few in the middle, just to any that like come off easily. Uh, some of them aren't ready yet, so I'll probably uh, leave it for later. But I think. Maybe I'll probably stop around here. Oh, there goes one more. Am I going to do another one? Oh, there's one one more there. Yeah, there we go. So that's uh, basically one crown. Yeah, usually uh, I do it way faster. Uh, but that one took a while. So here I'm going in for another one. This one went much better, I guess. It's more, more typical of how it usually looks like. I have a few stragglers this time, though. I think... Uh, from my mishaps earlier, my tip got a bit gunked up with um, the dew from the leaves. So they're kind of like clinging on to the tip because of that. But yeah, trying to get the other tweezer in. Uh, you can see I'm poking around because I can't really see how far it is from the nozzle. But there we go. And yeah, there. Another one done. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't think we need to see any more. Uh, but yeah, the sundew, you can see how sticky that, that dew is. It really clings and sticks the, 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 the gamme onto it. Right, so off camera, I finished off all the other crowns too for this micrantha pot. And let's take a look at some of the harvest. Uh, I noticed after looking at the jar though, I think there's a little hole in my little baggie. I'm going to have to switch it out for another baggie because some of the gamme escaped into the pot. Oh, it's, it's hard to open with one hand. Give me one second. I had to open both clips, but I can't, I can't get through both clips at the same time. But here we go. Uh, so yeah, so I think there's a little hole in the baggie at one corner. So that's why some of the gamay escaped into the actual jar. But that's fine because it doesn't really get sucked up because uh, the airflow when the area is wide because of like one of the gas laws or something, Bernoulli's law, I forget, um, is, real, is real slow compared to the velocity from the tube. So it doesn't really get sucked up into the vacuum. So there's some that are in the jar, and there's a whole bunch in the actual bag. And I think there's a little hole at one of the corners. I, I didn't realize there was a hole there, but it should be fine. Uh, usually, I would do all the whole process uh, over top of a piece of paper. So you could easily see any gamay that like pop off, like if they don't get sucked in uh, and such. But let me just dump all of these guys out onto the paper, and then we will transfer it into the test tube. Uh, this is actually quite a lot. It might be way too much for one test tube. I might have to put it in a uh, separate test tube. But yeah, I yeah, think there's a few in the jar also. So let me dump it all out and we will see. I've emptied all of them onto a piece of paper and this is what they look like. So I, I don't really know if I could count them, but I would guess it's definitely over 100, maybe even 300 in here, just uh, from those few heads alone. 
And I mean, not all of them are viable. Like I could give an example, like this guy right here doesn't look like it's viable. I think that one was from the Large Crown because, um, you know, I, I didn't collect it soon enough. So some of the game may dried out and died. Maybe even this one died. But all the plump looking ones, um, they are will all grow into a new Pink Meter Sura. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty effortless. Uh, and of course, I'll finish it off by emptying all of these guys into a little test tube. Uh, I mean, I'll have the STL files for my um, actual vacuum thing, but it's kind of specific to my situation because you're going to need the right size mason jar, um, like the right size jar and the right size vacuum. So it's just an idea to show you, you know, how you could maybe uh, whip one up yourself with your own like vacuum. Like if you have a pot or uh, it's not a pot, but a container, you could drill two holes in there. Uh, one for the vacuum and one for the uh, tube and make your own without 3D printing anything. Uh, it's not that difficult and uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty effortless. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. Just as a side note, I often find that all of the actual gamme will sink uh, when you fill the test tube with water and shake it around a bit. Uh, but like, you know, debris, like these little flower bits will float to the top and I fished them out. Uh, I just moved them out here to show you guys what they look like. but. I would fish them out just to prevent um, rot or something like that. But yeah, this uh, will be a tube that you could store in the refrigerator and uh, make new Pika uh, And also another thing is um, make sure to uh, do a few taps on the tube uh, just so that like any gamete that uh, gets stuck in the tube are also dislodged. Uh, you, I don't really get many. Uh, usually it's, they're stuck on the tip. Uh, but yeah, sometimes like they get gunked up by the, the sticky sundew like goo from the leaves and they might get stuck to the innards of the tube and um, it's not really a bad thing like there's so many that you don't really care about losing one or two the thing is uh, if you're sucking up multiple different species you don't want to get any cross contamination from various species because you can't really tell any of the gamay apart they all look the same uh, so yeah uh, thanks for watching